Welcome to At Issue. I'm H. Wayne Wilson. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you join us every Thursday evening, or maybe it's a Sunday afternoon that you watch. But regardless, today's topic is East Peoria, East Peoria economic development to be specific. We're going to talk about Bass Pro Shop. We're going to talk about the new downtown that very few communities have a chance to develop. East Peoria is doing that, and we're going to talk about that with the East Peoria City Attorney, Dennis Triggs. Dennis, thank you for being with us. Nice to be here, Rach. And also with Mayor Pro Tem of East Peoria, Gary Densberger. Gary, thank you for joining us. Thank you. And one note, uh, for those of you uh, looking at the program guide, you might have noticed that we were supposed to have Mayor Dave Mingus on the program due to an unfortunate uh, last-minute conflict. His schedule was not able to accommodate our schedule. We weren't able to regroup. So, Gary, thank you for subbing as Mayor Pro Tem. Sure. And let's talk about, first let's talk about downtown. Okay. Uh, you have a unique opportunity. Uh, Caterpillar has, uh, is it 65 acres? Uh, it's expanded beyond that, but yes, that was the beginning of it. And was there an original image or a, a, a concept of what you wanted to do when you learned that you were going to have this new land? Well, uh, the council previous uh, to when uh, I was elected had envisioned a, uh, uh, the main road was called Technology Boulevard. I think it was uh, geared more toward uh, technology, medical-based businesses, perhaps light industrial, uh, a little bit of... Uh, perhaps a bit of residential, but uh, more of a uh, jobs-oriented sort of downtown center. And I assume the economy uh, had a, a big impact on that, uh, not moving forward. Well, I think the economy had a big impact from uh, maybe 2008 up until through 2010. So I think the city had already changed its direction prior to the, to the recession and begin to focus more on having uh, less emphasis upon technology and more on mixed use. So I think that preceded the recession, really. When we talk about mixed use, in this particular case, what does mixed use include in the downtown? Um, well, the, I guess the vision for downtown has changed a couple of times. You know, it began as technology, it uh, went to mixed use. Uh, by mixed use, we uh, attempted to embrace a, a concept called new urbanism, which I guess is a step back in time where, uh, you know, uh, storefront businesses with uh, some residential above, um, mixed use in that to uh, bring people to the area, uh, have some retail, some uh, office space, that sort of thing, just sort of make it a uh, uh, multiple uses for perhaps even the same building. and. Uh, uh, we hope to be able to move forward with a little of that yet, but uh, that was sort of the, the mixed use. Uh. But, but clearly, uh, and forgive the term, but clearly it is driven by big box at this point. It is at this point. Um, big box uh, um, and uh, such as that, um, they bring people. Uh, they generate revenue for the city. Uh, they generate interest, uh, and perhaps they are the uh, draw that uh, brings other opportunities uh, for local small businesses, for residents, uh, things such as that. Restricting ourselves just to the downtown for the moment. Let's not talk about Bass Pro or, um, yeah, or the uh, Lowe's or any of those people, but Costco and Target are the two key members of the new downtown. Uh, I, I understand that there's going to be a new city hall and a library and there's the Morton Community Bank, but the big boxes are going to be Costco and Target. Are they anchors for what you expect to see uh, uh, outbuildings for? Well, I, th I think there's two things. They, <clears throat> they are anchors. Um, Target is probably, if one would look at the uh, uh, national data on this, is probably in the top five of what draws other other entities, other business operations. Costco is likewise very high in that top ten. So so they're anchors in the sense that they bring other people. And, and you're right, those are big boxes, they're important. But besides bringing other, uh, other uses for the property, they're also revenue producers. And 
uh, if one looks at, at what is the, uh, uh, the roundabout, we call it, and there's four quadrants. One of those is the new hotel. One of those is Morton Community Bank and an office building. The other one is about nine acres of a civic plaza. So the big boxes provide the revenue for the civic plaza to happen, to help pay for the infrastructure, uh, and draw uh, additional uh, retailers. We all know that communities and states have to offer incentives in the current environment uh, for, to, to attract these kinds of businesses. Mm -hmm. How did East Peoria go about making sure that you were able to attract these without giving away too much on your side? Well, frankly, there are those that, said, that would say that we did. But, uh, you know, incentives, I, I guess, start with uh, uh, TIF districts enterprise zones. Those are certainly a tool that East Peoria has used. Um, you know, as a um, development opportunity presents itself, you know, you, uh, you have to look at, first of all, what is it? What's the benefit to the community? What are the revenue streams? Um, and then as, as you delve further into it, you, you uh, depending on what that benefit is to the community and what the revenue streams are, that's where you start, uh, okay, what does the business or, uh, or the opportunity, what incentives are required to get that done? And then, of course, uh, uh, you weigh that opportunity and the incentives that have to be provided against the benefit to uh, uh, not just the city but the community and the citizens as a whole. A variety of people. I'm sure Tom Brimberry was involved and... Uh, Ty Livingston, etc. But you, you as the city attorney, were certainly involved in making decisions as to what does Target deserve versus what they want. For instance, East Peoria is building a bridge across Farm Creek at Target's request, at the at East Peoria's expense. Uh, things of that nature. Uh, how do you decide how far you go? Well, <clears throat> let, let me clarify in terms of, of being the decision maker. That, of course, is the... The, the city the council is the decision maker. Okay. I didn't mean to put I, all I, the I, onus on you. But, I'm sorry. But that's all right. <laughs> I, I certainly am very involved, and I generally uh, have those one-on-one uh, -on -one discussions, if you will, with either the um, somebody higher up in the corporate uh, ladder or with their attorney, and we negotiate, and I go back to the city council and get direction. I would, I would add, though, that as to the bridge across Farm Creek, that was there before Target. Uh, because when Caterpillar vacated that property, there was the original 65 acres, then it got expanded on the other side of Washington Street. So it's about 100 acres in an urban setting, which really didn't have any infrastructure. It works for a factory, but it doesn't work for, for any real development. So, so before Target, uh, we looked at a bridge across Farm Creek, and that was part of the original plan before we ever talked to Target. However, there is a second bridge that will be built that will facilitate the rest of the shopping center and uh, be of great uh, value to Costco because it'll sort of come in their front door. Uh, but how do, we, how do we evaluate that? Uh, we remind ourselves that um, uh, always there's no reason to do this unless it's the uh, citizenry is going to benefit. So we, we try to have conservative, reasonable projections as to the revenue, as to the uh, benefit in terms of bringing other people to town, as to more people at restaurants, gas stations, and so forth. Um, and then we, we, that's to look at it from the city's standpoint. But then we um, get a feel from talking to retailers around the country, from talking to other communities, from reading the literature to see what's going on in other places. And these retailers will, of course, always suggest to you that there's other people in other communities and other places that will um, be much kinder to them. And so it's a negotiation based upon the best information one can gather. And, and as we, you know, as you consider incentives, um, I guess two really dis very different current examples, uh, Bass Pro Shops heavily incentivized, uh, more heavily than perhaps any other thing that we've done. Uh, but when you consider the Bass Pro Shop deal, and you have to look at each one individually, is that Bass Pro Shop is unique. It's a destination point. It will bring uh, two and a half million people 
to the city of East Peoria that would not otherwise come. Uh, so it's, it's unique and you have to consider uh, that as a benefit to the community and what other opportunities it may bring with it because of that scope. So certainly you uh, may extend far further for a Bass Pro Shop, whereas with Target and Costco, certainly they're, uh, they'll generate a lot of money, they'll, a lot of tax revenue, uh, they'll bring a lot of people, shoppers to our community, um, they'll uh, perhaps other more immediate opportunities, but they're not as unique. So while there are incentives, it's certainly not to the extent that Bass Pro Shop was. And really, at the end of the day, there are two reasons to do economic development in the city. One is, what is, uh, does it make the city a better place to live? And the second is, do, will it provide revenue streams to do other things for the citizens of the community? Will it fix streets? Will it allow us to hire cops? Will it allow us to uh, improve our water system? Will it allow us to hire firefighters? Those sorts of benefits back to the community have to be there. Let's stay with downtown for just another moment. And there's another element here, and that is Cullinan development. You've contracted with Cullinan to develop a portion of the downtown area, and there are, could, could you just, just describe the relationship? Uh, our relationship with Cullinan started three years ago, four years ago. Is that right? Um, we uh, put out an RFP, solicited bids uh, for a master development agreement. Uh, we had two responses from Cullinan and Regency. I believe. That's correct. Who is national a, group. Who is a national uh, retail development firm. Uh, they then rescinded their bid. Uh, so we reached, uh, through negotiations, we reached an agreement with Cullinan and they've been working very diligently in a very poor economy since to generate and garner interest in, in uh, our downtown development. Uh, when, as that uh, agreement has expired. Uh, they continued to work. They remained in, engaged, uh, kept bringing forth ideas, um, uh, suggested things for streetscape and concepts, and, and really very diligently just, just kept at it. There is a lot of money on the line for, for Cullen, and they can make a lot of money. Is there a concern that maybe the agreement with Cullinan was a little too advantageous to Cullinan? There are those that would say so. Um, it, the idea has been put forth that perhaps uh, uh, at, at the, toward the end of the agreement, we, we should have looked for input from other developers. But uh, we had input from, an, from another developer for, for a very similar project on a slightly different uh, slice of the city, and it wasn't as good. We chose not to pursue it. Um, Cullinan, has, uh, Cullinan has the opportunity to, to make some money, certainly, why else would they do it? And, and the agreement includes that they have to develop uh, some outbuildings. Well, that, that is the agreement. I, I think people get confused because Cullinan played one role as a consultant. That, that expired, that went away. They continued to work without any compensation. Uh, hoping to, to bring a proposal that would involve a uh, target that the city would agree to. Cullinan comes about because of target. There is, there is not likely to be a Costco without a target. There is absolutely no target without building out additional retail. Target doesn't want to be standing alone. They want what's called co-tenancy. They want 100,000 square feet of co-tenancy. Uh, the target building is about 135,000 square feet, and that's a minimum. The expectation is that there will be 200,000 square feet of co-tenancy. That's a prerequisite to having target. So without having an experienced, qualified commercial real estate developer uh, such as Cullinan, then there is no target. And without target, there's probably no Costco. Without Target and Costco, there's no insufficient revenues to develop a civic plaza that benefits the community. So to understand development of this magnitude where, where there's an effort by this council to build a new downtown, there's just a lot of balls in the air at the same time. Now the, the Cullinan agreement means that Cullinan um, receives no incentives 
by reason of target sales tax, no incentives by reason of Costco sales tax, no incentives by reason of the real property tax that will result from target, no incentive by reason of the real property tax that results from Costco. Cullinan would like to have it otherwise. This is a negotiation, mind you. What Cullinan gets is, is incentives based upon what they bring in terms of this 100,000 co-tenancy. It is directly tied to them being productive beyond Target and Costco. If they are successful, uh, then the city benefits and they can make money. If they aren't, they lose. I might add at this point that Gary Densberger is not only mayor pro tem of East Peoria, he also is the commissioner in charge of finance and development, so he can speak uh, quite eloquently uh, on, I <laughs> on <hope>. these <laughs> issues. Um, but uh, I, I want to approach the, the issue of the types of jobs that are being generated. Mm -hmm. This is primarily retail driven at this point at least. As a longtime community resident who has served in various capacities mm -hmm. prior to your city council service, are you concerned about the level of pay for the jobs that you're creating? Um, certainly retail jobs are, are uh, traditionally um, not what you would consider a head of household income. Uh, one of the real attractions when Costco uh, uh, first uh, became a possibility was as we investigated them as, as a potential development partner, uh, we found that they are a, a, an excellent employer. They pay well above normal uh, retail wage scale. I believe they about 90 percent of their employees have full benefits. Uh, so relative to Costco, we, we are talking about some head of household jobs, which is important. but. But beyond that, the, the retail jobs for uh, stores such, big box stores such as Target and some of the other undoubtedly big box stores that will be co-tenants there, uh, those will attract people. It, it's our hope in this development, because there will be some mixed use, that we can generate uh, uh, interest w within the community. Uh, small business owners, uh, well-known small business owners within the community to locate within the city and take those opportunities to uh, grow local wealth and provide uh, opportunities for our, our own residents. Let's turn to Bass Pro for a moment. It's the big fish. Excuse the term. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. But it is. It's the big fish. Uh, I, I, I've heard all sorts of numbers, high millions of dollars in incentives. What did the city of East Peoria give in order to attract Bass Pro, and what did Bass Pro offer the city? The, uh, <clears throat> the city owns Bass Pro, number one, it owns the building. Uh, will own it forever. Owns all the land around the, bid, the building. People forget that. So what the city did was put $30 million toward the construction of that building, which it owns. The city then built some infrastructure, uh, basically Bass Pro Drive and the road, and that uh, was about $15 million. So there's about $45 million expended by the city for public infrastructure that will service other property, not just Bass Pro, but there's a lot of additional property that will be serviced by that infrastructure, and uh, then leased the, the building to Bass Pro. And what the city receives is a, um, a percentage lease, which is 2% of the sales that Bass Pro generates. Uh, every year for 20 years. Bass Pro um, has executed a, uh, an operating covenant that means they will operate for no less than 20 years. And that timeline coincides with the uh, debt service on the bonds that was used to pay for the project. So um, now the other thing that Bass Pro does is, is that we had very stringent requirements in terms of what, uh, what this operation would be. We modeled it after one in Altoona, Iowa, which is just east of uh, Des Moines. Uh, so we, we set the standard in terms of what they would build, and I would add they exceeded that. Um, it's a tough deal. Uh, there are communities around the nation looking for Bass Pro, and uh, it, um, Bass Pro has a lot of leverage. It's a tough negotiation, uh, but I will say this. They built what they said they were going to build, and what we get as a percentage of lease plus the sales tax uh, off from Bass Pro. Total outlay on behalf of the city of East Peoria, approximately? 
45 million. 45 million? Yes. And that, that includes the bond issue, et cetera? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's all of it. Okay. Yeah. And, and the 2% will cover that? No, no, 2% plus sales tax. Uh, understood. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, that I, I should add, H, that this assumes some further build out, too. Not all by itself, but with, with some of the rest of the property we own and being developed, then, then we project we'll cover all our debt service. You hit some stumbling blocks along the way. There was an attempt by Hammonds, who owns uh, Embassy Suites, yes. um, to build a second hotel. That stopped on what is called Lot 2. Mm -hmm. Is there hope for Lot 2 and for some, uh, there are out lots by Bass Pro and some others? We've had serious inquiries uh, about Lot 2. Uh, two or three different uh, projects have, have been discussed. Uh, we're hopeful that uh, something will happen there soon. Uh, the out lots uh, around Bass Pro Shop, we've had uh, some serious inquiries, uh, some by local people, yes, local. which is which is very encouraging. Uh, so yes, there's there's interest generated, and uh, I believe we'll. Is, is some of that uh, likely to be non-retail? Might it be medical, your original hope? Might it be something that might have some head of household salary? I think that uh, uh, perhaps in the, uh, what I'll call the downtown area, uh, the city has uh, maintained ownership and exclusive control over about uh, six acres along what will be Altorfer Drive. Um, which you can think of it as sort of between the triangle of uh, uh, Costco, Target, and the railroad track. Uh, along Center Street, the city owns some property. Uh, would certainly be more than willing to uh, listen to uh, uh, a developer that, that uh, wants to uh, do a condo development, wants to do a medical development, uh, um, so, Office space. So your uh, phone certainly. is available. Absolutely. <laughs> um, a, a final thought. Uh, we, we hear quite often, Dennis, that the city, of East, the city of Peoria is more difficult to do business with than the city of East Peoria. That's why the city of East Peoria is doing so well and Peoria is doing so poorly. That's, those aren't my words. <laughs> what, what's the East Peoria take on that particular image? Well, knowing, knowing that you work for a law firm based in Peoria. Well, not only that, I, I had occasion within the last six months to represent a significant client, private client, that uh, uh, needed some uh, cooperation with the city of Peoria, and it was, uh, it was received, and, and the process was, was, uh, was very smooth. So there may be some exaggeration to that. I think, uh, I think in the discussions I have with East Peoria officials, we leave that characterization to others. And the city uh, uh, has no reason to think that Peoria is difficult to deal with. But I, I will share this with you. Having done this for 30 years, I think it is a, a real advantage um, doing business in East Peoria to have only five commissioners, five elected officials who over those 30 years have always worked together and have always given direction to me and staff to make things smooth and to be friendly uh, to anyone interested in uh, coming or doing business in East Peoria. So we're smaller, we're, uh, we are a cohesive group, and uh, that maybe helps. And with that, our time is up. Thank you so much to Dennis Triggs, the city attorney for the city of East Peoria. Thank you. And thank you to uh, last minute substitution, uh, Mayor Pro Tem of East Peoria, Gary Densberger. Thank you for substituting for Mayor Dave Mingus. Thanks for it. it. And we appreciate your being with us on At Issue. Please join us next week when we'll be talking about a coal mine in Fulton County. Yes, coal could be mined again in Fulton County. We'll talk about the pros and cons next week on At Issue. We're going to pretend to be friendly. <laughs>